Hey everybody. Today we're getting started with scripts in R Studio. As your skill with R starts to increase and you start tackling more and more complicated tasks, it's going to become important to be able to save your work and go back and edit it later. The history tab and the up arrow in the console just aren't going to cut it anymore. And so scripts are a really indispensable tool in your toolkit. Let's create one. I'm going up here to the new file. Um, down arrow and selecting our script and you'll see it's just going to open essentially a text file and that's really all an R script is is just a text file with some additional tools that you'll have at your disposal um, and here we can just start typing in the commands that we want so let's start with library tidyverse that's usually a pretty good place to start if I just hit enter nothing's actually going to happen except I'm going to get access to a new place to write more code if you actually want to execute the command, you have to hit Command Enter if you're on a Mac and Control Enter if you're on a PC. And that will actually send the command down to the console to be executed. You can see it happening down there. Let's put in a few more lines of code. How about we let x be 1 to 10, y be, um, let's get some normally distributed random values. Let's get 10 of those. And finally, let's make a data frame with them data.frame. I won't be too sophisticated about my names. Okay. Now I could command enter through all three of those one at a time, no problem at all. Or I could highlight all three and then hit command enter to have them all executed at once. Command enter on a Mac, control enter on a PC. And you can see it sent all three of those commands down here. Um, alternatively, you can run the entire um, script using the source button here. And um, when we hit that button, you'll see that it really just gave us one printout, one line of printout in the console. It's trying not to clutter things up too much, but all of that code actually has run. Let's, let's go ahead and verify that by putting in another variable in here. W equals, I don't know, let's just call it 5. And then let's source the thing again. And you can see that we now have a value w equals 5 in our environment. If you do want your console to be cluttered, if you want to see everything that uh, is being done, you can do source with echo. So that's an op option as well. You can save your script and should save your scripts generally. Notice there's a source on save um, box that you can tick here. And that does what it says on the tin. Whenever you save your file, it's also going to source it. And the idea there is that way the objects that you actually have in your environment, the values, the functions you've generated, and so on, actually match up with what you would expect based on your saved version. Um, okay, so let's do one or two more things here just to show you um, some things that we have at our disposal. Let's um, skip a line. R will ignore skipped lines generally. And um, let's make a plot using this data frame. Let's... Um, have the x value be x and the y value be y, x going horizontally, y going vertically as you'd expect. And let's get a scatter plot. So geom underscore point. After the plus sign, I'm actually just going to hit enter here. And you'll see that r did go to a new line, but because of that plus sign, it knows that I'm not done yet. R recognizes that there's more to come. And so it has indented the next line down. This is actually going to be very useful because we're going to be able to look at our code later and visually see all the different pieces of our ggplot command. This gets important if we have many different layers, many different aesthetics that we're adding. For the moment, let's just put in our geom point and we'll open and close the parentheses. Again, um, RStudio recognizes this as all one command, so I can hit command enter on either one of the lines and have it happen. So there we can see our scatter plot. Um, let's see here. Let's do a tiny bit more on this. Let's go ahead and change um, the color to red. And um, let's go ahead and change the, um, the point size as well. If we start adding lots of arguments to our geom point, we will get a long horizontal line that could get hard to read. So I'm again going to hit enter here. And you'll see that R has started a new line with the parentheses kind of aligned there. So I can separate out my arguments in different lines and potentially get much more legible code. So let's just change size, S-I-Z-E, to um, 2. Let's not make it radically different. There we go. So it looks a little bit different. A couple other things I want to point out here. 
first of all is comments. The code for, or the, the symbol for a comment in R is a hash, and this lets R know to ignore the rest of the line. So um, let's let our future selves or other readers know what our code is supposed to be doing. So um, this is just a um, demo script for YouTube. Sophisticated stuff. And you can code um, line by line if you like, as you see appropriate. So um, I don't know, define some values. You should get into the habit of commenting your code. It's good practice. Um, I should say best practice in coding. Um, let's see here. Suppose that we're doing some work and we've got some code that we don't want to run every time we source a file. For instance, um, maybe it's just something that we did while we were tinkering with some data, doing a little bit of exploratory analysis, and now we're more or less done with it. Well, um, if we highlight all that code and go to code tools here, there is a function for comment uncomment lines that will put those hashtags before every single line that we've highlighted. And then, of course, we can undo that just as easily. There we go. There's lots of other useful stuff here um, under the, the um, code tools um, here. And so I'll have videos on many, many more of these to come. For the moment, I just want to point out one more potentially useful thing as you're first getting started with scripts, and that's the, the find and replace function. Um, this is something you can abuse, so do, be, do use it judiciously. But it's also potentially powerful. Suppose that I keep working on this script and it gets more and more complicated and eventually I realize df is probably not the best name for my data frame. It's not very it's not very descriptive. So let's find every usage of uh, df and go back and replace it with, um, I don't know, let's use another, in this case, non-descriptive name, frame. And I can go through um, one instance at a time or replace everything at once. Notice that there are options here for um, matching cases, whole words, regular expressions, and so on. So let's do it. It lets me know it's replaced two occurrences, which in this case is exactly what I would expect, where I defined the data frame, I called it frame, and where I actually used it in my ggplot. OK, I think that's enough to get us started on scripts for now. Um, I'll be back with more details on many of the uh, other things we can do with our scripts in future, vid future vids.